is a film about um, a small town in Pennsylvania that is going through what what is being called towns being erased by the federal government. So it means your, your zip code's taken away, your post office is taken away, and you're erased off maps. So it's, it's really, it's a little sort of study of a woman who's been a postmaster for 35 years and a town that has been around for a couple of hundred years, just within a very, very short period of time told that they don't exist anymore. So it's a woman whose occupation and uh, life work is being taken away from her at the same, town that, same time that the town is losing the central sort of focus of the town, which has been its post office. Um, so it's, it's, it's a, a little look at, at that phenomenon that has, there's 3,700 towns in the Northeast that have lost their identity in the last 10 years or so. And what drew you to this role? What drew me to it? Um, I think the director, Tom Quinn, uh, who, who came and, and sat with me and told me this story that he wanted to write and then the script that he wrote. Um, I think it was, and, and the first film of his that he made, which was called New Year's Parade, which I just loved. Um, I think those, those were the elements that made me want to work on it, yeah. And Peter, um, tell us about Extra Innings and what drew you to that film? Extra Innings was, um, or is a movie written and directed by John Gray, who I did a feature with about 10 years ago called White Irish Drinkers. So he sent me the script and he said, I wrote this part for you, which is always a, an attractive way to get an actor to be in something. And uh, it's a classic short, it's about seven, eight minutes, and a story about a reporter interviewing uh, the manager of a baseball team. And uh, it, it's, uh, I, if I explain too much, I'll give away the story. But that's the premise. Okay. Are you a baseball fan? I am a baseball fan. I had fantasized about playing baseball when I was a kid. But then reality ensued, and uh, <laughs> I realized that wasn't going to happen. You have a favorite team? Uh, I was born in the Bronx, and my folks, who were contrarians by nature, weren't rooting for the Yankees. They rooted for both the Giants and the Dodgers, which, of course, makes no sense if you're a baseball <laughs> fan. Anyway, we moved into a little village uh, in Westchester, New York, called Ardsley, and I was seven and a half, and my babysitter was about 13, and her name was Corinne Galgay, and she had an accent. And I said to my father, Where's she from? Her family, they don't sound like us. Where, where's Corinne from? He said, oh, she's from a city called Boston. I said, Boston? Do they have a baseball team? <laughs> he said, yes, the Boston Red Sox. And I said, I'm going to be a Red Sox fan because I was in love with Corinne Galgay. <laughs> and now I'm, I, I like the Red Sox, but I also am a, a, a long-suffering Mets fan. But I love the game. I think it's great fun, I love playing it, and I, it, it makes me, uh, I really enjoy watching it. I imagine you watch the World Series. Parts of the World Series, because uh, I share a television with my wife who loathes baseball, so <laughs> I would steal a view when I could. But uh, I did, I thought it was fantastic, I think it's great for baseball that a team that hasn't won a World Series since 1924 actually wins. And I, I, I like the makeup of the players. I thought they were, it was really good. It was fun. So do you, could you see yourself being a manager or a coach? As long as they're hiring me, I could be a manager or a coach. Or do you mean in real life? In real life. Oh, I could be a manager, yeah. I don't know if I'd be any good, but I could certainly put on the uniform and <laughs> go like this and rub my nose and make marks, <laughs> make a lineup. Karen, what kind of things do you like to do? Actually, either, both of you. Um, what kind of things do you like to do when you're here in South Florida? Stay out of the heat. Gosh, you know, I mean, the only time I've been here for the most part has been f to work, you know, for film festivals or whatever. So I can't say that I've had a lot of uh, opportunities to do much other than that. Uh, if I was just here visiting, I'd probably get to the beach. <laughs> 
Um, probably enjoy just walking on the sand and swimming in the salt water, which is always like a wonderful thing to do. You want to go to that guitar you know, hotel. <laughs> I wouldn't mind going to that guitar hotel. It looks very intriguing. Um, I don't know. You know, I, I wish I had the opportunity to actually to do something while I was here. But, you know, you see, when we're here, we have a schedule that we're trying to uh, right. uh, keep yeah. up with. Yeah. yeah. I'm the same. Yeah. <laughs> Ditto. Ditto. <laughs> okay. So reflecting a bit on Animal House, do you feel forever connected to each other? Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. I'm yeah. always going to be connected to Karen. <laughs> it's one of the perks yeah. of doing that movie. Yeah. I would say more than any other film I've ever been involved in, we as a group have stayed yeah. more connected to each other, uh, the, the Animal House group at large. Yeah, there's a good there's a, eight, eight or nine of us that stay in touch. Yeah, and, and get a, drawn back together from yeah. time to time, yeah. including with John Lambis. Um, Our director, you know, yeah. yeah. That's great. Yeah. Okay. So, how often, Peter, do people, or wait, yeah, how often do people come up to you and say, it's not, a, it's, it's not going to be an orgy, it's a toga party? Well, they, I, uh, not as much as they used to, <laughs> but uh, I, I was fascinated when the film came out. Relatively quickly, people would, I'm sure you went through this, people would yell lines at me from the movie, like from across the street, like we were all <laughs> buddies. <laughs> And they, uh, and then over time, I realized they know the lines better than I know the lines. Because <laughs> once I did it, I didn't have to remember it. But I thought that was a great example of something that is a cultural success. Because I'm, I'm sure Karen is the same way. We're fans first. I mean, there's, you know, I've been watching movies since I'm a kid, and uh, you know, it's just, it's just fun to have, be in part of something where people. People want to tell you a line that you said. It's like, oh, okay, that's, that's There's good. There's a lot of quotable lines yeah, in Animal yeah, House sure. that, that continue to be very highly quotable lines. Yeah. What's, yeah. Do, do they come up to you and quote a line also? Or you know, I think with be? Katie, you know, they, they, they love that line that I have with Boone, which is, of course, now very politically incorrect. N incorrect, yes. You know, so I probably won't even repeat it. But, <laughs> but um, uh, you know, I'm just trying to think, you know, with Katie... Katie doesn't have that many, you know, I mean, I would say most of the highly quotable lines are, are, are a lot of Delta them. lines. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. So, well, Karen. There's a college down the drain and things like that. Yeah. <laughs> you received a Lifetime Achievement Award from Fliff two years ago, right? Yes. Okay. And, let's see. So, <laughs> hold on a minute. My phone just went off. So, Peter, is it nice to know you'll have Karen there when you receive the honors? That's the only reason I'm here is because Karen is, Karen is the, uh, she's the experienced one in this uh, Lifetime Achievement stuff. Yeah, it's great. I'm flattered to be uh, somebody paying uh, me these compliments and uh, having Karen there will assure me that I will be uh, responsible and not become flippant. <laughs> And, of course, there's a toga party after the film. Yeah, we will be there. <laughs> You're not going to be wearing your togas? Not tonight. No, I'll be there, but I'm not going to wear my yeah. toga. Oh, I'll be at the party, yeah. <laughs> but togas, no. togas no. for me. No. No. Katie didn't wear a toga anyway. That's right. So. <laughs> she was... All right, so we want to know what's next for both of you. Um, I'm in the middle of doing a film right now called Things Seen and Heard, and we're going to finish that in the next maybe three or four weeks. And um, I have a play I want to direct in the summer and a, possibly another film I'm going to do in the spring and summer. Um, but that's pretty much it. I'm looking forward to having a little time off at the end of this next film because I've had a, like a really busy last six or seven months. So, and how yeah. about you? Well, right now I'm between decades. I mean, between jobs. <laughs> uh, but I've been uh, I've been writing a lot. I've uh, I'm, I have two. Uh, my wife writes crime fiction. Her name is Cornelia Reed, R E A D, and we met by I optioned her first novel. Uh, a field of darkness about maybe seven or eight years ago so I wrote a screenplay and I've been trying to get that done 
since then she's written three other novels with the same character so clearly it's time for it to be a series and I'm trying to finish a screenplay that I have I've got two ideas it's all in process I mean nothing specifically unless somebody's out there wants to hire us <laughs> um, so I wish I could tell you specifically but I'm I'm, I'm not willing to talk about anything that's not that doesn't have any beating heart yet.